everyone and welcome back to our virtual chat chat with a virtual intern with American consuls in Uzbekistan, Naomi Messer. Hi, Naomi. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited today because we are having a very interesting topic and many people actually, a lot of viewers asked us to talk about American literature and today we're doing this and Naomi will be talking about little women uh, um, without further ado, I just give the floor to you, Naomi. Take it away. Okay. Um, so as discussed, I'm going to be talking today about the classic American novel, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. It was published between 1888 and 1889, and it has been a favorite since then. Little Women has been adapted to into film and TV a number of times, even theater and opera, most recently in 2009 uh, in the film, also called Little Women, starring Emma Watson, Saoirse Ronan, and Timothy Chalamet. Hopefully at least some of you have seen it or read the book. Um, Little Women tells the story of four sisters in Massachusetts, the March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. Um, of the March family who are talented young women living um, in Civil War America, their father is serving in the military, trying to fit, find their way in a country that is just starting to have increased rights and opportunities for women. It is a really sweet and moving book and I hope that you enjoy this presentation. So much like the little women she wrote about, Louisa May Alcott grew up in Massachusetts near Concord. However, unlike the women of Little Women, her young life was fairly tumultuous. Born in 1832 uh, to an educator and a social worker in Pennsylvania, her father soon after her birth moved the family to Massachusetts. There he fell in with the famous American writer Henry David Thoreau, who some of you may know for have written Walden, another classic American novel. Um, I don't think it's, oh, it's a novel, excuse me, uh, and joined his Transcendental Club. The Transcendental Club uh, was an influential group of writers who lived in New England in the early 1800s, and it was sort of an American, American variant of Romanticism, which is the, the 1800s movement that um, privileged spirituality and um, reconnecting with nature and beauty over uh, industrialization and, and things like that. Um, another famous example of someone who is interested in romanticism is the author of uh, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, um, where um, in particular, transcendentalists also had sort of a Protestant streak and they believed in the beauty of independence and that connection to God could come from self-reliance and hard work. Uh, the family became further involved with other religious movements, eventually moving to a utopian community. Uh, in, and in their commune, they sought to live a tra transcendental life um, by living anarchically in a place that had no government structure. So as you can see, Louisa May Alcott was connected to some of the most interesting movements of the 19th century. Um, and her family was fairly poor. Um, her father was not very successful. He was an educator. Um, and it seems that he put most of his effort into um, these sort of movements that he was a part of. And it created big rifts in her, her family. Her mother was very well off and she was upset that, you know, the father could not make money. Um, so as some of you might know, uh, Louisa May Alcott had to work 
Um, and as some of you might know, although we oftentimes say that the time that women started working is after World War II, that's not actually correct. Middle class women um, were the ones who didn't work until World War II, but lower class women have pretty much always worked. Um, and Louise May Alcott was one of them. She was in something called genteel poverty where her family was the, like her immediate family wasn't particularly wealthy, but the, uh, the family around her was wealthy. Um, she began working from a young age as a writer, domestic helper, seamstress, and more. Her family was also involved in the Underground Railroad and helped shield fugitive slaves and bring them to freedom. She was also, you know, a noted opponent of slavery and a proponent of women's rights. In fact, her writing career uh, began with her publishing stories and articles in an anti-slavery newspaper. She wrote voraciously for papers and magazines, writing serials or novels that are split up into small sections each week. Most of them were pretty romantic um, and a little scandalous. She too had four sisters um, and the novel was based off of her family and she wrote it shortly after the Civil War in the 1880s. Um, and Louisa May Alcott never married or had children and was a, a proponent of spinsterhood. The story goes that she decided to write the book after her um, publisher asked her to write a book that was centered on young women. Um, and she didn't know, she said, you know, I don't know a lot of women. I don't have a lot of female friends, but I do have these four sisters. And so she wrote this story about the four sisters. She gave it to the editor. The editor wasn't particularly excited by the story. Um, and then he gave it to his niece and she read it and she was really excited and said it was a great story and he said okay if she likes it you know i have to publish it and it became you know the big hit and classic we know today so for the plot there are four sisters meg joe beth and amy in the march family who live in massachusetts uh, their family much like the alcott's is not particularly wealthy and their father has gone off to the civil war to serve as a chaplain each girl is quite distinct. Meg, the oldest, is 16 when the book begins, and she's seen as extremely beautiful, genteel, and graceful. Jo, 15 when the book begins, is stubborn, independent, um, and an accomplished writer. Beth, 13, um, is a talented piano player who is kind and honest um, and quite godly. Amy, the youngest at 12 years old, is an excellent artist who can be difficult and self-centered, yet still lovable. Um, at the outset of the story, they, uh, along with their mother, um, they live with their mother, uh, who's known as Marmee. The story begins on Christmas Day, uh, the first Christmas without their father, who's serving in the military. Although the family is not wealthy, they decide to donate what would have been their elaborate Christmas morning meal to a poor family nearby. This act of kindness is noticed by their wealthy neighbor, Mr. Lawrence, who introduces the girls to his grandson, Theodore Lori Lawrence. Um, Lori quickly becomes a friend to the girls and takes part in their antics. To support their family, Meg and Joe work, Meg as a tutor and Joe as an assistant for her wealthy great aunt. Um, shortly after Christmas, Meg uh, visits wealthy friends for two weeks where she um, becomes jealous of all the things that her friends have that she doesn't have. Um, but the intended goal is that she is supposed to attend these parties to learn how to dance, how to be a good wife and meet men. Um, so when Lori comes to one of the dances, Meg's friends assume that they're in love. However, Meg has eyes for his tutor, John Brooke, a kind uh, man who, but who is also an orphan and therefore impoverished. The family soon gets uh, news that their father is sick in Washington, D.C. with pneumonia. Uh, Marmy takes a trip to D.C. to nurse him back to health. And at first, Mr. Lawrence agrees to chaperone her, but uh, Marmy understands that he is too sick and John Brooke, Lori's tutor, comes instead. Um, and while in D.C., John confesses his love for Meg to her parents, asking for her hand in marriage. They are very pleased, but they make him wait a couple of years until she's a little bit older, which is definitely quite strange for a family at the time to turn down a marriage proposal. While Marmee is away, Beth gets scarlet fever after volunteering with a poor family who had children die of scarlet fever. And as a precaution, the youngest Amy is sent to their great aunt's house where she becomes pretty close with the great aunt. 
and Jill, who already had scarlet fever, nurses Beth back to health. Beth ultimately survives her bout of scarlet fever, but she remains tired and enfeebled. Upon returning from DC, John Brooke decides to enlist in the military while waiting for Meg to marry him. And he comes back several months later injured and tries to find work so he can buy a house for himself and Meg. During this time, Lori heads off to college and part one of the story ends a year later from when it began on New Year's Day when Mr. March returns home to his family. So in part two, it takes place three years later and Meg and John are married. Uh, Meg has recently given birth to twins, but it causes a rift in their marriage, but it, which is shortly repaired. Um, Meg feels that John is not putting in enough effort, and John feels that all of Meg's time is taking up caring for the twins, but some advice from Marmy quickly figures out the situation, and Meg learns how to both provide attention to her husband and take good care of her child, and John is expected to also pitch in a little bit more into taking care, care of the child. Lori has graduated from college, finally succeeding in his last year at Joe's insistence. At the same time, Amy is chosen to go over Joe to go on a European tour with the March's aunt. As I said, they're in genteel poverty, so all of their family members are wealthy around them. They just themselves are not. Um, Beth continues to remain sick despite her recovery from, from scarlet fever. And Joe realizes that she's depressed and tries to determine why she's upset and make her happy. Um, and at, during this time, she comes to realize that Lori is in love with her. Um, however, she tells, however, Joe tells her mother that she doesn't return his affections and sees him as a brother. She decides she needs to go and get distance between herself and Lori. So she moves to a boarding house in New York City um, and becomes a governess to the children who live there. While there, she becomes close with Professor Baer, um, a German professor who uh, teaches her the language. And for money on the side, she writes, uh, Flor fl flowery romance stories for newspapers. Um, but Professor Bear soon finds out, even though she's been trying to keep it a secret, and informs her that such conduct is base and unladylike. Um, Joe leaves it down in New York to return to Massachusetts. And while she's there, Lori proposes and Joe turns him down. Heartbroken, he goes to Europe with his grandfather to escape his pain. Beth continues to get sicker and sicker and Joe continues to take care of her. While in Europe, Lori encounters Amy and he begins to see her in a new light and slowly fall in love with her. Amy is less taken with him because he's just spent an extended period of time in Europe drinking and carousing and having a good time. And she encourages to find him to find some meaning in his life. Beth dies of complications shaking the whole family. This is somewhat autobiographical for Louisa May Alcott because her sister Elizabeth, known as Liza to the family, also died at a young age. Um, Lori and Amy, while grieving, find some solace in each other and ultimately marry before returning to Europe. Professor Bear, shortly after Beth's death, comes to visit the family in Massachusetts. At one end of his stay, he proposes, at the end of his stay, he proposes to Joe and she accepts. However, they do not have enough money to marry. Um, he goes out west and becomes a teacher, but a year passes and he still doesn't have enough. The, the March's great aunt dies ultimately leaving Joe or her home in the estate. She's able to marry Professor Bear, turning the home uh, and the estate into a school for boys. She and Professor Bear have two sons. Amy and Lori have a daughter. And the story ends with uh, and, um, Meg and John have three children, uh, and the story, or two children, excuse me, they have twins. And the story ends with Marmy and her, her daughters, their husbands and grandchildren picking apples. So the book Little Women deals with themes of home, work, and true love. Uh, in Little Women, the home is seen as a warm and welcoming sphere, a place of liveliness and mirth. And in the book, it's very clear on the page and even in the movie how much these girls love each other and how warm their environment is as a result. For Louisa May Alcott, women establishing warm and cozy homes is seen as a way for them to exert a positive influence on, on society and the men in their lives. By creating these homes, the sisters can make society more positive and welcoming by raising children in a proper environment where they can grow up with everything that they need. These novels are also about love. 
They discuss love between sisters, unrequited love, and romantic love. The sisters are patriotic and have love for their country, and are religious and have a love for God. In this novel, family love, in particular love between sisters, is more important than romantic love. In some ways, the novel is claiming that true romantic love doesn't exist or is rare, but the love between siblings is the truest form of love. Um, with respect to work, um, members of the family work hard despite coming from a wealthy background as their father has lost their money. By working hard, the girls are able to earn their keep and demonstrate their mettle. This is an example of some of the Protestant values that Louisa May Alcock grew up with, which value hard work as a way of achieving godliness. Um, and these are pretty common themes in America and American literature in which people are encouraged to have a Protestant work ethic and working hard is seen as being re more religious than other people. Um, the book is also notable for its portrayal of four vastly different women and, and you know, femininity. In the book, spinsters and female artists are seen as having a relevant place in society, contrary to many of the views at the time. Additionally, although some women in the book are eager to become wives and mothers, others are more headstrong like Joe and resistant to that notion. Um, and another theme in the book, similar to the theme of love, is marriage. Many readers are surprised when Joe turns down Lori's proposal. It is even more shocking to viewers of the movie because the actor who plays Lori, Timothy Chalamet, is a heartthrob. Um, it's further surprising when she ends up with Professor Bear, who in the books is described as an older man um, who is mean to Joe and criticizes her writing. There are more practical reasons why Louisa May Alcott included this ending. Her publisher said that Joe had to end up married at the end of the se series, and rather than give readers what they want in the form of the happy ending with the leading man, she decided to switch it up a little bit to show women that they don't need to end up with you know, a certain man necessarily. There may be other reasons for the inclusion of this marriage. Um, for one, it shows that Louisa's, Louisa May Alcott's view of marriage was less about love even though there is much love in the book and more about financial arrangement. Uh, for Meg, that isn't the case. She marries out of love, but for the other girls, it could be argued that they marry out of convenience. In particular, Joe, who ends up marrying Professor Bear after she comes to at least somewhat regret uh, jo uh, turning down Lori's proposal and she wants to participate in society, so she chooses a husband. And of course, the husband she chooses is extremely odious and the most base caricature of what a man could be. Um, and in order to, you know, become a little woman as, like, to become one of the eponymous little women, you have to give up a part of your dreams in order to become a part of society. So in that way, Louisa May Alcott is commenting on the difficulty of being a woman in this time period and the limited options available to women. Um, and she does that partially through the character of Joe, who is encouraged, you know, to give up her writing career and become a teacher. So here is the movie adaptation. And here are the actors from the 2019 adaptation, which was directed and written by Greta Gerwig. In the first picture, on the left is Emma Watson, who plays Megan. Next to her is Florence Pugh, playing Amy. Um, Saoirse Ronan, on to the, further to the right, plays Joe. And on the very far right, um, there is Beth, played by Eliza Scanlon. The other picture um, on this side is of Timothy Chalamet, who played Laurie. As I mentioned, he's sort of a heartthrob. He's extremely popular, and a lot of girls have crushes on him. The, more, the movie also stars Laura Dern as Marmy and Meryl Streep as the great aunt. And it was filmed on location in Massachusetts, including in the utopian community where Louisa May Alcott once resided. That uh, space is used for Megan John's house. Um, this gives the movie a really authentic feel, um, and as you can see on the left, the scenery of Massachusetts is really beautiful, especially at the beginning of fall when the leaves turn. And the movie is pretty true to the book. Um, a lot of the dialogue is actually taken directly from the book. Um, however, there are some differences. So the movie is not chronological. It actually starts seven years from the Christmas that starts off the book, and it jumps back and forth, um, for a variety of reasons. 
Um, Meg in the movie is a talented actress, um, and Joe inc- tries to encourage her to follow that talent. But true to the book, Meg declines, and she is more interested in becoming a wife and a mother and becoming involved in a life of domesticity. Um, And in the book, Meg's husband is pretty uninvolved, which leads to a marital conflict. But in the movie, he's a more present husband and father and their problems arise from financial difficulties um, and Meg's desire to buy things that are beyond their means. Um, In the movie, Joe has has become a stand-in for Louisa May Alcott. And a lot of elements of Louisa May Alcott biography are ascribed to her like it sort of implied that she's writing this book about her sisters um and at the end at the, the the movie starts off with a title saying like little women by louisa may alcott and ends with louise uh little women by joe march um, um and a lot of the things that louisa may alcott described in her diary end up happening to joe so like you'll see in the trailer, which I'm about to show you, the editor saying that the female character needs to get married at the end of the movie or at the end of the book. Her husband, Professor Bear, is more generous and a better match than Professor Bear of the books. He is more encouraging and believes in her abilities. Um, Amy becomes a much more likable character in the movie because there's a deeper understanding of her desire to marry Lori. It doesn't just seem like it's done out of spite as it sometimes does in the books where she... Uh, sometimes, you know, in adaptations, she becomes the de facto villain because she's the less relatable character. Um, one thing I really like about the film is the costumes. I would suggest looking at pictures up online, but the um, costume director worked really hard to make costumes that were not only true to the 1800s, but also had sort sort of more of a modern feel, which I think you can see on the right in this picture. Um, where although it is pretty clear it's a period piece it's not as though these costumes would be so out of place today and i think they're really beautiful um the film garnered a number of academy awards including an academy award for saoirse ronan seen here uh, for best actress and an academy award for best supporting actress for florence Pugh, as well as a number of um uh, nominations for production and design um and when discussing why, so so as we discussed before, all of the change, there are a number of changes from the movie to the book, um, all of which um, makes the, the movie a little bit more modern and in particular makes the male characters a lot more popular. And when discuss, deciding why she discussed to make the film, Greta Gerwig discussed how the film appeared how like writing this film appealed to her because it was all about the struggles between making art you enjoy and art that's commercially successful as seen in Joe's writings where she's writing these stories that are very commercially successful but maybe not the most artistically fulfilling as well as the fact that the dreams you have as girls um in order to grow up into a woman and to develop you can't you by necessity have to leave some behind as I mentioned before in order to become a little woman in the book you need to give something up Um, I saw the film in theaters in 2019, and I really liked it. Um, We are now going to watch the trailer, so you can decide if you want to watch this movie as well. And I really recommend either watching either the movie or reading the book. It's a classic story that speaks a lot about America during the Civil War, as well as American intellectual life during that time. I'm working on a novel. It is a story of my life and my sisters. Make it short and spicy. And if the main character is a girl, make sure she's married by the end. Ow, Joe! I want to be an artist in Rome and be the best painter in the world. That's what you want too, isn't it, Joe, to be a famous writer? Yes, but it sounds so crass when she says... My girls have a way of getting into mischief. Oh, so do I. This is Meg, Amy, Beth, and Joe. I intend to make my own way in the world. No one makes their own way. Least of all a woman. You'll need to marry well. You are not married, aren't you? Well, that's because I'm rich. Joe, would you like to dance with me? I can't because I scorched my dress. And Meg told me to keep still so no one would see it. I have an idea of how we can manage. 
Joe is a lost cause. So you are your family's hope now. I believe we have some power over who we love. It isn't something that just happens to a person. I think the poets might disagree. We can leave right now. I'll sell stories. Joe. And you, you should be an actress and you should have a life on the stage. Just because my dreams are different than yours doesn't mean they're unimportant. I have Teddy. loved you ever since I've known you, Joe. I couldn't help it. It would be a disaster if we It wouldn't be a disaster. Okay? We'd be miserable. Joe, you would be a perfect I can't, saint. I can't. A new play written by Miss Jo Marsh. <laughs> Women, they have minds and they have souls as well as just hearts. I want to be great or nothing. And they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty. And I'm so sick of people saying that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. <laughs> So, who does she marry? So, that is the trailer. Um, I think you can see the love between the sisters and how warm their relationships are between each other. Even when they fight, they still seem to love each other a lot, which makes the movie really sweet. Um, and if anyone's read the book, um, and uh, s please let me know if you think that this movie, even if you've seen it or not, and if the trailer lives up to it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you so much, Thank you. Naomi. Um, we do have some questions, and um, I want to remind everyone, uh, we are having an interactive program, so uh, please don't hesitate and put your questions and comments in the comment section, both on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so, Amona Chilov is saying that the latest movie was spectacular and he loved it. Well, I'm happy to hear that he saw it and he liked it. I did. I saw it as well and I really liked it. So, I would suggest if people have the opportunity, they can go out and see it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about the movie, uh, we had, before you started talking about the movie, we had a question from Dania Hasanova. She asked if you have watched the movie, Little Women, and if yes, do you think there is a big difference between the book and the movie? So, yes, I watched it. Um, as I said before, I really like it. It's a super sweet movie, um, and it's, you can really feel the love between all the characters, and that makes it feel really nice to watch. Um, I, th there are not very many differences between the book and the movie. Um, in a lot of cases, they updated some of the male characters to make them a bit more lovable, um, because in the book, they sort of act like men of the time, and although there's nothing wrong with that, it might make them all pretty hateable when they don't really take care of their children and maybe are not the most respectful, um, of their partner's desires. Um, and the other difference is that the story is not told chronologically, which reviewers, when I was reading about the movie, said that it really benefits the character of um, Amy because otherwise she seems just sort of bratty and terrible and like she's very jealous of her sister. As we can see in the trailers, she burns her sister's play and her notes um, in order to punish her and to get back at her in the way that younger sisters sometimes do. Um, and then it's like, oh, she's also stealing, you know, her significant other or whatever. And so they try to make the, the, the by changing up the chron chronology, you get to see that like Lori and Amy are really in love and like they have a good strong relationship. So, mm. okay, thank you. Um, Maftuna says that she wants to read the book now. Okay, I I would suggest reading the book, um, and you can also because it was written a long time ago, you can get it for free online. There'll be a lot of websites um, that will have the whole text of the book because it's not copyright anymore. 
So mm. please read it. It's wow. free. That's good to know. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a, a lot of books are like that, by the way. If they were written before a certain time period, you could just get them for free online. Is it like more than 50 years? Something like that. I think it's like closer to 100. 100. Okay. The Great Gatsby just became free. I think the copyright just went up. So. Mm -hmm. Makes our life easier now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maheshwar is joining us from Nepal. Hi. Good to see people from around the world. Um, question from Rahatoy Safarova. Uh, ACQ didn't join us today, but they are watching us live. Uh, so Hi, ACQ. <laughs> Hi, ACQ, yeah. Um, she's asking if Louisa May Alcott is your favorite writer. Um, although I do like her book, I wouldn't say that she is my favorite writer. Um, she only wrote one book um, that became pretty popular. Her other books... Um, we're pretty much just like based on little women. Like she wrote one about on little men, which is just about like uh, Lori and his family. Um, and I don't find them necessarily to be the most relatable to my life because they were written so long ago. My favorite author um, is someone named Elif Batuman who wrote the book. She actually got a PhD in Russian literature and now she writes novels. So she wrote a book called uh, the Idiot, which is not Dostoevsky, it just has the same name and is about a, a college girl in her freshman year who's like uh, trying to navigate being in university and stuff like that. So she's my favorite author. And I like Otessa Moshbeg as well, um, who writes books on sort of similar topics. Maybe we can put uh, your favorite writers later in the comments. So yes. Yeah. see uh, well, what they might read to might want to read. Uh, my question is, there is no copyright for the names of the book. You can like name your book with whatever was famous before. Like, do, do you know anything you about You mean, you mean in terms of naming your book, The Idiot, when it's yeah. not The Idiot? Um, yeah, I believe once the copyright is up, the name also, you, the trademark goes up as, as well. And then you can do things like name your book um, after another book. Also under copyright law, um, I think you can, I mean, obviously that book is a classic, but it's not, it's not as though she's trying to take money away. The author's trying to take money away from Dostoevsky. She's making an homage and a reference. And so like, I think you can do certain things like that, but yeah, the copyright is up, so there's no issue with calling it by the same name. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, Bakhtiyor Edmorodov is uh, uh, saying thank you, Naomi. And his question is, what is the theme of the story? Is it connected with the Civil War? Um, yes. Uh, so the theme of the story is discussing women and femininity sort of at, you know, the turn of the century in the 1800s um, and how people balance being, uh, you know, a traditional good woman with their desires and what they want to do um, and um, marriage, the purpose of marriage, if marriage is based on true love or just like supposed to, or just sort of a societal burden. Um, um, love and love between families and how love between sisters can in some cases be more impactful and important than true love um, and work and the importance of hard work and having a Protestant work ethic. Um, I think it is at least partially connected with the Civil War. There's definitely a reason why um, the book takes place then. I think it's um, to show that even in you know hard times and really difficult moments, having a warm and connected family um, is important. And it also shows the sacrifices. There's a lot in the book about making sacrifices for the greater good, which again is sort of based on Louisa May Alcott's religious background. Um, and that's just another, like the father going off to serve is another example of sacrifices in or in, uh, for the greater good. So. 
but I'm not sure if there, I, I don't know if it's like a Civil War book per se, although you should read it, let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Another question from Back to Your. What is your favorite genre? Um, I have a couple. Um, I like to read more modern um, literature in general. Um, so a lot of things that are published pretty recently. Um, I also will sometimes read some Russian literature. Um, I really like to read uh, books about the former Soviet Union, especially novels, mostly because that's what I spend a lot of time studying. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, uh, in addition to that, I like to read nonfiction books on history. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And another question from Bakhtiar. What do you prefer, the movie or the book? Well, I haven't read the book in probably mm, 10 years. It's been a little bit. So it's hard for me to say definitively if I liked, I, I think when I read the book, I didn't really like it and I felt really frustrated by it. And I felt that the plot was moving very slowly, but I was pretty young. So maybe if I return to it now, I would like the book a little bit more, um, but I definitely like the movie, so. As of right now, I like the movie better, but I'll have to go and revisit the book. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amanda Chilov is asking, why does Lori end up marrying Amy if he loved Joy in the beginning? That's a good question. And I, I'd, al I'd also like to hear people's comments and thoughts on this because it is like a big, it is something that always like upsets readers, like, you know, as you could see in the trailer, it seems that Lori and Joe have this really good connection and they are like very close with each other and then they don't end up getting married. Um, and maybe like maybe it could be interpreted when I saw the movie, I thought I saw it as like he can't get Joe who he loves. And so he's going to get the next best thing, which is her, his sister, Amy, her sister, Amy. Um, and I also think that it's it has something to do with Louisa May Alcott's view of marriage in which um, she doesn't really see marriage as this like great romantic um, institution, but it's more something that you just sort of have to do. And so by denying them a happy ending, it's a way of, you know, denying Joe and Lori a happy ending, it's a way of um, saying that marriage is maybe not so important. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mamura Yusupova is asking, in your opinion, Naomi, why one should read this book? What influence it can have on contemporary youth? That's a good question. Um, I think a lot of the themes um, on love and family um, and sacrifice uh, hold true today. Uh, all of the girls are, um, nice and kind, but they also have character flaws that they learn to overcome in the book. And I think you can learn a lot of lessons about um, how to be a good person, how to strive to be better, um, and how to um, improve your personal character. Um, and so I think that's a good lesson for contemporary youth to learn about improving themselves. I also think it's just a sweet book that's really nice. And so you should read it for its artistic value in addition to its um, potential influence of showing like the good character of these girls who you can model yourselves on. Thank you. And another question from Mamura. Where can we, we find e form e version of this book? Is it possible uh, to find it for free? It is possible to find it for free. Um, I will find a link, usually a lot of universities. You can find it on gutenberg.org. I just looked it up um, and that's free. Gutenberg.org uh, is a website. It's named after Gutenberg who published the first Bibles. Um, and they, although it's like not maybe the most aesthetically appealing, um, they have a ton of books um, that are um, out of print or, you know, past their copyright date and so you can sort of read through them 
-hmm. I can include a link. Here, I'll do that. Oh, thank you. Let me copy it to the. But I would suggest if you're, you know, trying to read more English books, I would suggest going on Gutenberg.org because they have so many ebooks and stuff for free. And if you look around, I think they have ebooks you can download. Can you please put um, write this down or yeah or spell it out so that sure. you could... okay great I'm I'm putting it in the chat so um, everyone can see it. Thanks, Naomi. Of course. All right, so let's move to another question. Dania is asking, do you have a favorite character in Little Women and why? Um, I think my favorite character in Little Women is probably Jo because she's very tough and not very easy to get along with. And I really like to read books about very difficult women. Um, for the two authors I mentioned earlier are known for writing books about extremely difficult women or complicated women. Um, and so I like her the best. Um, but in the movie adaptation, I felt that she was, she could be a little selfish and a little difficult, maybe too difficult. So um, I'm not sure about that, but I would say that she's my favorite because um, she, I relate to her the most in her like struggles and desire to work and to do all these things and coming up against constraints. Thank you. Next up, Omonachev. Closer to the end of in the film, I remember Joy wanted to get together with Laurie and wrote a letter to him. Why did that happen? Um, well, first of all, I want to hear people's thoughts on this because I'm not, you know, the, like, of course, I'm not the expert. Um, and I really want to hear people's opinions on these topics as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, again, it's a difficult question. Um, it might be short-term regret that I that um, she like you know sees this guy with someone else, and she feels like regretful that she didn't take up the opportunity, even if she doesn't genuinely mean it. Um, or she could have like genuinely been in love with him and not like quite known. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it was, it's disappointing for readers and for viewers all the time when she doesn't end up with Lori. They seem like such a good match, especially in the movie. They have so much chemistry that it can seem like really difficult to understand. But I think it's just... I don't know, it's also, maybe that's also part of, you know, the overall theme, one of the overall themes of Little Women, which is in order to be a little woman, you need to give up on your dream. And she had the sense that Lori was always going to keep chasing her and being interested in her. And in order to become a little woman, she had to give up on that notion because Lori was not going to sit around and wait for her. And that was something she gave up in like maturing. So I don't know. Please let me know though. Yeah, Oman. What are your thoughts on what Oman? do you think? <laughs> Please let me know. Yeah. All right, let's move to the next question. Sivara Karimova is asking, how about other literature similar to The Little Women? Could you recommend a couple of them? Thanks. Um yes. Um, I would suggest maybe reading. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, which is also available um, on the Gutenberg website. Um, I like Anne of Green Gables, which is sort of, um, it's another classic book. It's, I can't remember who it's written by, but it should be available also on the Gutenberg website. Um, and it's uh, about uh, this girl who lives on Prince Edward Island in Canada. She has red hair. I think she's adopted and she sort of go. I love those books as kid, as a kid, like she like goes around and um, does like her adventures. Um, I, but let me keep thinking on that and I will get back to you. 
Yeah, sure, no rush. Um, you mentioned when you uh, talked about the book um, about the marriage out of convenience and marriage out of love. What is your opinion about marriage out of convenience? Um, that's a, a good question. Um, I don't, I don't want to be too cynical on this broadcast, but I think uh, people at least partially marry out of con convenience. Uh, not just, I mean, I don't know, I'm not married, but that would be my assessment. Not just because people want money, but because people do not want to end up alone with nobody to take care of them and like being sick. And so it's easier for people to partner up. Um, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think that that's just sort of a natural way of going through life. Okay, I found some more, some more books. Okay, go ahead. That's welcome. I looked this up. Um, people also say, I can put it in the chat if you want. Yeah. They got Pride and Prejudice, which is by Jane Austen. It should be available on the website. Um, Jane Eyre, I'm gonna spell Prejudice wrong, I'm sorry. I don't really know how to spell. Um, Jane Eyre, which is by um, Charlotte Bronte, also should be available on the website. Walden um, by Henry David Thoreau, which I was talking a little bit about. He was sort of one of her contemporaries. Um, this website suggests Anna Karenina, um, which maybe some of you have read in Russian in school. Um, That's what I would recommend. Oh. Yeah, that's a man mand mandatory thing. On a okay. So, then you, so if you've read it, if you've read it in Russian, it might be easier to read it in English. That, that's for Russian schools, but for us, oh, okay. yeah, for sure not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like we have both education in Russian and in Uzbek. Makes sense. Yeah. Thanks so much. I'm copying it to the comments. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't see any more questions so far, but until we get more questions in our um, chat box, Naomi, how much time do you spend actually reading? And is reading if, like a popular thing among American youth? Um, I mean, it depends. I definitely don't spend as much time reading during the year as I would like. I find that when I'm in classes, I like cannot read. I like, because I spend so much time reading during the week, my brain just sort of shuts off and I just like don't really enjoy it. But um, during the summers, I can usually like, um, if I don't have classes or something else going on, um, I can usually read like a book a day. I did that last summer for two weeks. I'm wow. hoping, I mean, that was just like for two weeks. So I, re I read a lot of books this summer. I've only read like two or three books. Um, um, so I would definitely say that I don't put as much time. I do a lot of reading in general for school, but I definitely don't put as much time towards reading for pleasure as I would like. Um, and I'm hoping that when I finish college, I'll finally start to be a little more relaxed and more interested in reading because I won't have done it the whole time, so. Thank you. Um, Daniya Hazanova is asking, what books do you like reading? It doesn't mean re well, rereading. Um, rereading, sorry, yeah. Yes, I've... Um, I've reread The Idiot by Alif Batuman um, a couple of times. I really, really like that book. I'm trying to think what other books I've reread. That's pretty much it. I read that book like two or three times um, and I really, really love it. I think it's also published in Russian if, or at least some of her other works are. So if people wanna read that book and it, they find it difficult to read in English, um, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got uh, answer from Awan. 
to his own question it's definitely hard to tell i feel like joey yeah. gave up her aspirations uh, aspirations and the determination she had earlier or just she figured out it's still possible to pursue her dreams being married yeah i mean that makes sense that um to an extent she gives up some of her aspirations in the book um and yeah, she probably did realize that marriage was not a big barrier. And I think it's also, it makes the book more interesting that it's not this like neat and happy ending. It makes it more complicated and there's more things for us to discuss. But that definitely makes sense that she probably thought like, you know, oh, you can't be married and do this stuff. Um, and then she later found out that you were able to. Although I do think that in the book, uh, Louisa May Alcott definitely um, doesn't like, she was a spinster herself. So she sort of, you know, maybe doesn't encourage the institution of marriage as much as other people might. Mm -hmm. But good analysis. What is your favorite novel? Cristiano Ronaldo is asking. Um, so as I've mentioned several times, probably too many times, really like the book, The Idiot by Elif Batuman. Um, what other books have I read recently that I liked? I'm looking at my bookshelf right now in order to like see if there's anything I'm missing. Um, I like the book My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg, which is about, it's a very strange book, but it's about, you know, a woman, uh, another difficult woman who decides she's going to sleep her whole year and doesn't really want to do anything. Um, very, yeah, it's a little bit strange. That was good. I also liked this uh, Polish book um, called Drive Drive My Bones Through Like the Plow of the Earth, um, I think is what it's called. Sorry, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tor Torczuk. I wouldn't say that that's necessarily my favorite novel, but it's a novel I read recently that I really liked. Um, if you like sort of like more of a murder mystery, it's definitely um, for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Till uh, Dora Kasimova is asking, do you think reading books changes your view to the world? Or is there something you don't agree with what, read, what is written in a book? I definitely think that reading books changes your view of the world, especially uh, literature. Um, because there's so much discussion about how individual characters feel um, and their thoughts and their mindsets, especially if it's written in third person, meaning that there's like a narrator, uh, like an overall narrator that knows everybody's thoughts, as opposed to like, you know, in a, a single person telling a story, um, you can get a sense for how people um are sort of thinking and what's going on. Um, and you gain a lot more empathy for people. Um, I think that even if you ne don't necessarily agree with something written in a book, um, you know, a lot of times characters are like people, which is to say not particularly good and difficult to deal with. Um, and so, so a lot of times things that people don't like um, have more to do with what the characters are saying. Um, but there are books I've read and I haven't necessarily agreed with their conceptions about the world, um, but I've still really liked the book, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a, like, do you guys have in high school, in US schools, is there like a list of books that you're supposed to read before you finish your school? Um, not really. Although, I mean, there are some books that pretty much every high schooler reads, like I think The Great Gatsby, The Catcher in the Rye. They're just some classics like that. Um, but there's not like, you know, a set list of things that need to be done. Um, and it definitely depends a lot on high school. Um, in my high school, some teachers were very interested in teaching us like sort of more contemporary literature. So we would read like, spy novels and stuff like that um but it definitely there's definitely not a list mm -hmm. okay thank you 
Um, I also wanted to ask our viewers, because they asked so many times, what is your favorite book? I wanted to ask you guys, what is your favorite book? You can put it yeah. here in the comments and uh, share. Maybe and I've read it. Yeah, and people will read your favorite books too. So let's let's share right here and read each other's favorite books. <laughs> um, all right, so um, Naomi, that was so interesting. Thanks so much. And even in the comments to the announcement, we had so many people who said that that's their favorite book and Aww. some people didn't finish reading it. They were frustrated that they wanted to discuss it here at the chat chat. Uh, so we have people commenting us saying thank you um, and thank you from ACQ team. Thank you. Um, and uh, this was the last chat chat in our series of chat chats with Naomi Messer, but we hope we'll have some other programs with you, Naomi. Um, Me if too. you don't mind, <laughs> we will be happy to see you again. Okay. All it's right. So, <laughs> thanks, everyone, and um, have a good evening and have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.